I'm now going to start with my report. And it won't surprise any of you who were at the county committee meeting in 2019 that this report is going to be very different from last year's. Last year was all about interacting with the community, get out the vote, movie nights, and then 2020 hit. This is us every month um, at our executive committee meetings, I would post a slide showing upcoming events. And this was a slide from April. And as you can see, just about everything was canceled, including our Udall dinner, which was supposed to be in April. That was a really scary thing for us. Udall is a very important fundraising event for us. And for those of you who were at the Arizona List Luncheon on March 7th, that might be the last time we saw each other in person. Early on in the year, in January, I spoke, we had a regular executive committee meeting and I told them that I had two goals in 2020, voter engagement and fundraising to support voter engagement. And I challenged everyone to ask themselves, is what you are planning on doing going to translate into votes in November? And if it's not, I asked them to put it aside. And so we fundraised and we, we started 2020 in an excellent financial condition with $107,000 in the bank, thanks to Kat Ripley's work in 2019. We did hold a virtual Udall dinner. We added to the ranks of Catalina Democrats, our, our most generous donors. Uh, I did call time and so did Joshua. Sometimes we did it separately, sometimes we did it together. We received grants from ADP, thank you so much. We sold camp Biden signs until they delivered their own. And we, turned, we rolled all that money back into get out the vote materials. We did weekly asks and we had our WEPI program. WEPI stands for winning elections through Pima Youth. And this started through a contact of LD9 PC Eve Shapiro a lady on the East Coast wanted to gather money and give it to battleground states and use the money to employ young folks to work in elections. And uh, she gave us seed money, Joshua got some more, and we used it to pay interns to work for the LDs, to work for candidates and to work for us. And so uh, that was really successful. How did our fundraising compare with previous cycles? Uh, this is from the Secretary of State. It's a little outdated, but we were up 25% from the 2015-16 cycle and up 35% from the 17-18 cycle. Um, keep in mind during the pandemic, um, it was, we're really happy with these results. I'm pretty sure that if we had not had a pandemic, we could have beaten the Arizona GOP. And how did we spend it? Well, we spent it on voter engagement. And I'm just sharing with you some of the uh, lit that we paid for with, with the LDs and helped them mail out. Um, there were many more. LD2 had a beautiful slate card. Uh, this down here is LD10s. Um, LD9 had a colorful trifold. And uh, LD3 had two wonderful postcards, uh, one of which we turned into a billboard. Um, and we sent a couple of hundred thousand of these out. Um, the LD outreach was unprecedented and the LD chairs collaborated and looked for voters that were unlikely to be targeted by the coordinated campaign or mission for Arizona. Um, and we were in contact with them. So we knew who they were reaching out to. And so I really wanna thank the LD chairs, the dream team, Michelle, Eva, Kim, Bonnie, Steve, and Jean Vickers in LD14. Um, we met monthly, sometimes more often. Um, we were sharing knowledge and information and intel. And uh, it was really a very, very productive group. Pima Dems invested in Young Democrats. Pima County Young Democrats is technically a PAC. 
Uh, but of course, they're our allies. And they reached out to 10,000 young voters. We paid for the lit. They got it out there. What a bargain for us. I, I'm really grateful to them for doing the hard part of that work. How else did we spend money? Well, we gave money to all of the countywide candidates who had uh, challenges in the general election. We gave funds to the LD11 candidates, Felipe Perez and Joanna Mendoza. We paid for over the top marketing. That's, those are those short videos you see before YouTube videos. We did radio in English and Spanish. We did billboards in English and Spanish, and actually we had a trilingual one. This one's in Thana Atham also. We did Facebook boosting to the tune of about $6,000, and you'll hear more about how effective that was. And we paid for people, interns, to work for the LDs and campaigns, most of this WEPI money. Other engagement we did that didn't cost very much, um, we did videos. We had our Between Two Saguaros series. I mean, who says that electioneering can't be fun? These were really fun. The hosts loved doing it. The candidates loved it. Um, it was goofy, but it allowed people to see our candidates in a different light. So thank you for those folks who hosted that. We hosted online countywide candidate primary debates and also in District 1 Board of Supervisors. I want to thank Joel and Zoe for that and the moderators who moderated those. Um, last, in 2019, we did an in-person mayoral primary debate and we got 800 to 1,000 people in a school auditorium. These online debates had 4,000 views each. I think we're, we're learning that we don't have to pay money for a school auditorium to reach people. These were really effective. There are a lot of things I'm proud of, and I'm going to be jumping between a few things here. But one of the things I was very proud of last year and just as proud of today is our education team. We, we had education broken out into two groups, those that reach out into the community and those who train our PCs. We had our Civics 2.0 going out into the community. Greer Warren, Gail Camaris, Linda Peterson Vargas and Maggie Winchell were instrumental in that. And we had many uh, public officials speak at that, Kat Ripley, Sharon Bronson, Steve Kazachik. You can see the others here. Thank you to all of those who participated. This is how we bring people into the party. And then you can see this team down here in the bottom, starting with Steve, Bonnie, Kim, Marlene. Um, we did all these PCDP education for the PCs. And Greer held weekly uh, request to speak office hours at our headquarters while we were still open. So I, I'm feeling really good that our PCs uh, had the tools to go ahead and do their work. We have allies, and I need to mention a few of the most significant ones that helped us this cycle. First of all, uh, many of you may know Jeannie Buell. She is a PC in LD2, and she used to be chair of the Idaho Democratic Party. And she came to me and Lori Cinnamon and said, these Idaho PCs want to work in a battleground state and they wanna write postcards, can you give us a, lit, a targeted list? So we worked with her, we came up with a message uh, that Trump wants to take away your social security uh, we, Lori generated lists of unreliable Democratic voters and left-leaning independents in LDs three and four who are over 65. And these Idaho voters, Democrats, sent out 20,000 handwritten postcards and paid all the postage. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Idaho Democrats. Uh, the Arizona ground game, one of our most valuable allies. Um, they adapted their signature defined neighborhoods concept um, and reached out to with their project 11 project in LD11. And they reached out to nearly 15,000 voters in LD11, each volunteer personally contacting the voters in their virtual neighborhoods. Each volunteer had a targeted list of 60 to 80 voters and each of them reached out to those folks 
uh, at least three times. They had a total of 250 volunteers, most of them in LD11 but and in Pima County, but we also had volunteers from the East Coast to Hawaii. And I want to thank LD, outgoing LD Chair Steve Whithoff for that. Also the Arizona legislative campaigns, the Biden-Kelly campaign, Swing Left, Indivisible, and, and volunteers in Pima and Maricopa who helped with this. Um, the results were tangible. Uh, Felipe Perez came in within 3.2% of the, uh, the, the, Demo the Republican who won the, the uh, election and Joanna Mendoza came in with eight, within 8.2%. Um, that actually uh, is much a huge improvement from the last cycle. And we're, we're just making incremental progress in LD11, which is a tough place to be a Democrat, but we're, we're getting there. Mm. Oops, Let's see. We have another ally, Field Team 6. Uh, they registered slightly more than 6,500 new Democrats in Arizona. They put on approximately 25 in-person voter registration events in Arizona, about half of those in Pima. They, they concentrated on Pima Community College and downtown. Um, and they were particularly helped by LDs 9, 10, and 11. Um, they stopped these events when the pandemic started. Uh, and now they are focusing on the Senate race in Georgia. So thank you, Field Team 6, a powerful ally. And um, if any one of you want to help in Georgia, please reach out to them. Make no mistake, we have no greater ally than our brothers and sisters in organized labor. They've supported Pima County Democratic Party forever. And when ASARCO went on strike in 2019, we went to support, support them and we supported them again in 2020. Um, this, this strike has upended many Arizona families and we can't forget that a healthy and large middle class is a core economic principle of our party. And that is what labor unions promote. I wanna thank the labor unions for supporting our fundraisers. When I was talking to the steel workers representative and trying to get him to donate $5,000 to our Udall dinner, he said to me, you know, those steel workers donate 25 cents for every hour they work to their union. So that donation to Pima County Democratic Party that they made represented 20,000 man hours of work. So think about that and thank you. Thank you to UFCW 99, to PALF and AFL-CIO and Communication Workers of America. Um, we, we have your back and, and you have had ours for decades. Thank you. Uh, when I first became chair, I was struggling with how Pima County Democratic Party could add the most value to our goals of electing Democrats and advancing our values. And we really figured out that the most expeditious and the best ways to support our LDs, because the LDs are closer to the voters. And by this, I mean, imagine this as the political organization hierarchy, BNC, state party, county party, LDs, and the voters. In my opinion, and that of the LD chairs now, money should flow downhill toward the voters. DNC shares with ADP, ADP shares with us. Pima Dems should support the LDs. I don't think we should be asking the LDs to, to pass money up the chain anymore as we've done in the past, because the LDs are doing the hard work of getting out the vote. We've flipped this relationship around between the LDs and Pima Dems and I really think it's the model we need to follow in the future. I wanna talk about our PC numbers uh, in, in 2020. Uh, these have changed just slightly since then, but um, we, we ended up uh, electing 550 precinct committee people 
uh, who started taking office on October 1st. Um, we had an amazing retention from last year. Um, these are the elected PCs year by year, and you can see that we've sort of crept up over the years to 2018, but we managed to keep a lot of our appointed ones this cycle around, so we jumped from a, just under 400 to 550. Um, in the 2018-2020 cycle, we appointed 234 PCs, and uh, we retained many, many of those are the ones we retained as elected. And I, I need to thank the LD chairs for that too, because they were tenacious in uh, making sure people, people stayed with it. This is a slide from my campaign speech when I ran for Pima County Democratic Party chair two years ago. And I said that People vote for ideas, not for candidates. And we, if we want to energize folks, we need to be fearless in standing for our values. And I'm proud to say we have been. We created a wonderful platform that you all approved last year at our um, county committee meeting. And we passed some meaningful resolutions. This one regarding the future of policing in Pima County. Uh, we affirmed the Black Lives Matter uh, we affirm Black Lives Matter, and the reason I love this one is because it's not just a statement. It has action items for people to follow. Uh, we also uh, approved resolutions in support of Invest in Ed and the Justice for All initiative. I'm going to jump quickly to some data, and uh, I want to thank Lori Cinnamon, my go-to person for charts and data. Uh, Always, every time I need interesting information, she's there for me. Uh, our statewide, our county turnout was excellent. We increased from 78.5% to 82.5%. The higher you go, it's harder to bump up your, your percentages. Um, and we were second only to Yavapai County this cycle. Um, they are always the number one county, and they're very red. So we need to keep chasing them. Unfortunately, we don't have the turnout by party stats yet. The GOP has always managed to edge us out, but I'm very curious to see how that went this time around. We increased the percentage of Democrats in Pima County. Uh, you can see we stayed pretty steady from 2016 to 2018, uh, and the, the Republicans did too. But going into 2020, we got bumped up by one, 2%. Republicans lost a percent and so did independents. So we are bluer than ever. Um, talk about net votes by party for the top of the ticket by county. Uh, Pima knocked it out of the park. What can I say? And um, I'm so proud of this. I started saying in, August that we would do this. And then I crossed my fingers that I would not be proven wrong, but, but I knew that Democrats wouldn't let us down. Um, but to show you this, uh, this shows for each of these bars, it shows the 2016 vote and the 2020 mark, the 2016 margin for the top of the party and the 2020 margin. And in general, except for Maricopa, Blue counties got bluer and red counties got redder. Um, so we all need to keep that in mind. The, the, um, the divide is growing and um, it is really more of a suburban urban versus rural divide than anything else. And for that reason, I think the, Democrat, the, the demographics support Democrats. People, our secret weapon. Uh, also, when, when I ran for chair, I said that I wanted to treat our volunteers like royalty and I wanted to turn them into political weapons. And we've done that. We, thanks to Lefty and Barbara, we staffed our headquarters with 30 volunteers working 10 shifts per week. Um, that changed a lot during the pandemic, but we, they kept working from home. Um, 
the LD, thanks to the LDs for sending additional help to HQ when ballots dropped and things got really crazy. I wanna thank Bill LeRae, our operations manager, who manages our old building that needs a lot of work. And he also manages all the infrastructure, phones, phones computers, uh, inventory of all kinds. We bought new chairs, we bought new TVs. Um, uh, then when Lefty and Barbara left us, uh, Melody Prentice took over uh, managing our volunteers and she did a wonderful job. And I'm very proud of how we used our volunteers' skills. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit. So we have a communications team. Uh, uh, Ellie Brecker, Richard Wiebe do op-eds, letters to the editor and press releases, Jenny Pagano on our website, and Shelly Burgoyne on social media. I like writing op-eds, and um, when you have a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, as one of your volunteers is, as, as Ellie is, we should use her for that. And we did. And she always made everything I wrote better. Every newsletter was made better by Ellie's editing. And Richard is a wonderful uh, a press release writer. He had some amazing experience working on promoting some big healthcare initiatives in California. And we have people with skills and we used those skills. Jenny Pagano on our webmaster. I, I have to remind you guys that our website is amazing, but very dynamic with a lot of content and it requires a lot of maintenance. And this was the person who did it. Um, the website is now bilingual and we have all of these different resources on it. And Jenny was constantly, I, I have ideas in the middle of the night and was, was texting her at all hours. I hope I didn't keep her up all night, but my brain sometimes never stops working. And um, this is someone who has been invaluable to our efforts. And I'm, I'm gonna spend a little more time on this one because there, there's some lessons learned here. Um, this young woman, Shelly Good Burgoyne, walked into our headquarters and wanted to answer phones. And when we found out that she had a master's degree in digital politics and social media, from George Washington University, we said, mm -mm, you're doing our social media. And we put her to work and we have metrics that will show how successful and amazing she was here. Um, Shelly is a military spouse. About two months ago, she moved to Guatemala, but she's still doing this for us from there. And she prepared this slideshow. I'm gonna zip through it very quickly, but it's important because during pandemic, uh, social media took a, a, a huge role in our outreach. So first of all, uh, you should all know that F Facebook still reigns supreme among the social media platforms. And what goes into a successful social media day? Uh, creating daily original content, video productions, analyzing the data, and doing reverse social mapping. Those are all things that, sh that Shelly was doing. Uh, we were successful and we really increased our page followers between August and November. And our organic outreach was really pretty amazing. Organic outreach is a like, a comment, a view, or a share. And we were having organic outreach to followers of up to 140,000 hits a day. This is important. Organic outreach is unpaid, and you can see that in blue. Paid ads are in red. And organic outreach is always more important than paid outreach. And face, Facebook rewards, Facebook out, Facebook's algorithm rewards good organic outreach. So we have to stay active and authentic daily. And when we do pay for ads, as their reach gets close to the organic reach, we know that those ads are working. And this is really interesting. A lot of our, our stuff went viral. Um, friends, of friends of our followers are looking at our stuff. It's being amplified across Pima County 
And this was especially true before and during the election. Again, a reach is a like, a comment, a share, or a view, and our reach was getting up to 250,000 a day. Um, paid impressions also went up. An impression is just um, a click, and Pima County's size is perfect for, uh, for um, paid advertisements on Facebook, apparently, according to Shelley. And our pay paid ads over the election cycle worked and reached our relevant and voting audience. They were very targeted. And for about $6,000, we made a huge impact on social media. And this impact translated into votes. We were hitting almost 300,000 folks a day during this period. We did videos. We produced 56 videos. You can see them on our YouTube channel. They're highly geographic, demographic, and socially targeted. Um, there's, they were, we, there were some particularly good ones. Shelley really thinks that we were able to move the needle in the Board of Supervisors District 1 race. What we did was, uh, uh, for the COVID-19 content that we did, we targeted parents with kids in school, especially in District 1. We targeted nursing home residents and workers, nurses, hospital workers, and Amazon workers. And um, there seemed to be a real desire to see those and also the Spanish videos that we did. Um, so these uh, did great. We went, we went in really hard after Steve Spain as a science denier in District 1. Oops. And these are some of the views we did, the, the videos we did. Um, I need to jump over this very quick. Who do we reach? Over the course, you can see males and females in the various uh, age groups. We did increase over the election cycle our uh, followers of young men. We doubled that. And we increased men across the board, actually. Um, and that was something that um, Shelley really tried to do. OK, so this is fun. Oh, wait. Oh, I moved something. This is really fun. How are or our organic or unpaid reach compares with others? So we have 8,000 followers, but we have an average organic reach of about just under 30,000 per day. Maricopa Democratic Party has a much larger base of followers, but a fraction uh, under 5,000 reach per day. ADP has 33,000 followers, and their reach is about half of what ours is. Um, we are doing that by keeping it fresh. We're posting about 79 posts a week, and that's what keeps people coming back to us. Um, Facebook al Facebook's algorithm knows we are posting original content, and they reward us for this. And if you want to feel sorry for somebody, you can feel sorry for the Pima GOP that hits 144 people a day. They're doing about four posts a week. Um, we really are doing reaching more people than every other political Facebook page, except for one, and we're going after him. Doug Ducey is the only one who beats us. How do we engage with uh, people on Facebook? Uh, in July, it was a mix of computer and smartphone. Uh, but as we got to November, uh, phone, mobile devices really took the lead. Um, and that's important because that means more youth, more men, and more often. Um, obviously, photo posts get the most engagements. And Shelley did have some important goals. They're here. Um, I won't go over them, but I just want you to know that I think we need to use this tool ongoing um, to reach out to people and get them, now that we've gotten people to vote, let's get them involved in the party through social media. So thank you, Shelley. She's definitely a political weapon. Um, so voter protection was a huge volunteer effort. Um, Overall management of that was by a team at ADP, and thank goodness, because we could not have done it. We did credential over 500 volunteer poll observers, 500 wonderful people who watched the counting and processing, 
Um, they did the logic and accuracy testing. They were poll observers and they also did hand count auditing. Thanks to all of those people who made it happen. And I have to single out Barbara Tellman who really took a lot of that off my plate. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I'm going to thank Catherine Ripley, our executive director who did so much for us. And one thing I wanna say is um, two years ago when I came, became chair, um, we walked into headquarters and asked for files and financial records and there were none. And Kat and I both promised each other that we would come up with transition documents for whomever becomes the next chair. And we have done that. The next chair will get, get the information they need to take over. And um, I am going to do my darndest to get an orderly transition put into the bylaws next year. That should always be the case. Thank you, Kat. I'm going to thank uh, my new executive director, Joshua Polachek, and Layla Counts, who is operations and development. Um, this, this was a very active season at headquarters, even during, and pandemic made it difficult. Um, Joshua and I called big money donors together, and he did it separately, and he made the calls. He did the work. Thank you, Joshua. And Layla, special projects and events. I was always just calling her and just texting her things almost as fast as she could do them. We're so grateful for her, her input. I call her my fixer. I don't know if she knows that. Um, and I need to also just mention a few special thanks to Community Action Committee, Dana Cormash, um, the LD chairs. Oh my God, you guys, thank you. Uh, Carolyn Garcia, who helped our treasurer so much. Zoe Five, all things technical and fundraising. Our platform committee, our bylaws committee. Paul Eckerstrom and Marjorie Cunningham, who helped me with Catalina Democrats. My fellow, fellow county chairs and um, others who listened and served as sounding boards, particularly Joel Feynman. Um, we have challenges going ahead. One of them, of course, is redistricting. You all know that, and I'm not going to go into detail here. But also inclusion and diversity. I'm going to talk about that for just a moment. Every county party is required to have a diversity and affirmative action committee um, and, and have a budget for it. And we do have the budget. We had the committee, but it moved in fits and starts. Every county's had problems pulling this together. So as a workaround, we we're trying something different. We started this inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility program. And you all should have received a link. Uh, you can see it here where you can fill out a survey. We are going to try and figure out, address barriers to participation of underrepresented populations. Think about this, young working families, the last thing they, a young working person wants to do, especially if they have kids, is log on to an LD meeting at night or something like that. So we've got to figure out a way to demystify the process and increase participation. Please go to this link if you haven't already. We should all, every one of us, be proud of our voter turnout, growth in democratic registration, We've restored financial solvency to our party. You'll hear more about that from Maggie Winchell. Financial accountability. We should be proud of our platform. Better communications, monthly, weekly newsletters, social media, our YouTube channel, party building and PC retention, and all the trainings we've done. We should be proud of our transition, that our LD chairs are collaborating and did unprecedented outreach. We recreated the relationship between the county and the LDs. We contested almost every race. I think there were two JP races. We came close, but we couldn't get some of Dems to run in those. Uh, we helped our candidates financially and otherwise. We created a friendly and welcoming headquarters. We used the skills of our volunteers and all of these things led to winning elections. Finally, 
I'm going to admit to using my political clout in a perhaps unethical way. I was waiting to get a dog until after the election and then COVID hit. I realized I needed a quarantine buddy and I saw this little white dog on the PAC website. But PAC was closed down, they weren't answering emails or the phone. And so I posted a picture of this little dog on Facebook. And within five minutes, I got a call from Sharon Bronson. She said, go get him. She, Sharon's my hero and Basil is amazing. And then in closing, I want to say, thank you all for entrusting me for the leadership of Pima County Democratic Party. I realized that I ran for chair as an outsider. I realize my management style might be different than other chairs. I realize I shook things up between the, P the county party and the LDs. To think that the only qualification for any job is to have had that job before is close-minded and counterproductive. I'd not served in an official political position before this, but I came into the job with certain skills and I came with a plan and I had a vision of empowering good, capable people and letting them run. And thanks to many good Democrats, we succeeded in the face of a daunting pandemic, a polarized political landscape and overt white supremacy emboldened by a fascist in the White House. When I had doubts, I looked to you all, the people ready to do the work, and without question, it reminded me we could not lose. We raised the money, we recruited PCs and volunteers, we trained them, we educated the community and engaged with them through literature, videos, social media, debates, and special events. We registered Democrats and then we got them to vote. We won offices. We passed propositions and we made Pima County the vanguard of the Democratic Party in Arizona. Thank you.